everybody. Welcome to our um, how, how to Bike with Kids webinar. We hope folks come here um, with a lot of questions and leave here with them all answered. My name is Mary Catherine Graziano. I am the Senior Education and Safety Manager at Locomotion. We also have on the line Doug Stewart from SCUMAC and Melanie Grubman um, from the Bristol Safer to School Task Force and the founder of the Human Powered Parade. We will be um, presenting first and then we will have questions at the end. So if you need, if you have any questions that are burning questions, um, you can just type them in the panel where it says questions right there. I will keep an eye on the question box as we keep on going. So for those of you who are new to local motion, we are Vermont's statewide advocate for active transportation. We work to create vibrant communities and safe streets. And our mission is simple. We really just want to bring walking and biking within reach for all Vermonters. Um, let's see. And so let's meet our presenters. This is um, our first presenter will be Melanie Grubman. She is the founder of the Human Powered Bike Parade, and she is also a member of the Bristol, Bristol Safe Routes to School Task Force. Her presentation is called Safety, Stewardship, and Joy, Biking with Youth. After that, we will have um, the wonderful Doug Stewart, who's company lead at SKIVAC, and he will be presenting on gear for biking with kids. So quick housekeeping rules. Everyone is going to be on mute. Um, and if you have any questions, like I just said, you can type them in the question pane. I will be monitoring that as we continue. If you are having trouble with audio, you can go to either a phone call or computer audio. Just um, click on the little um, phone icon on the, on the panel on your right hand side. Right. And without further ado, we will go to um, Melanie's presentation and I'm going to unmute her right now so she can talk. Okay. Uh, Melanie, you will need to unmute yourself. Okay. Perfect. And let's get going with Melanie's presentation. All right. Okay. I, have... so I wasn't. I wasn't necessarily <laughs> going to show just the presentation. Can you see me too, or no? You can just hear my voice. Yes. Oh, you can see me too. Okay. I can't see. So, um, my name is Melanie, and I have been teaching. I used to work in San Francisco Bay Area to run their education program, Safe Routes to Schools. It was the national pilot, and we were lucky enough. Oh, we were lucky enough to get funding so that we could have mandatory pedestrian and bike education in all schools from second through eighth grade. And so I had a lot of experience writing curriculum and working with kids of all ages there. And then now I have my own five and seven year old and have gone through the process of figuring out how to bike with them and how to introduce them to the joys of being outside on a bicycle. And so I think of biking with children through three lenses and that's why I kind of labeled my presentation as such, safety, stewardship and joy. Um, without any of those three, I feel like the experience of biking with kids isn't complete. So from the very beginning, um, hey, Mary, Catherine, can you go to the next slide? Oh, as you can see from that slide, um, that's me on that first slide with four kids on the back. And, you know, my kids just grew up on the back of a cargo bicycle. And so I transitioned from taking my kids on a the back of my bike on a bike seat. I took my honeymoon in France with my ex-husband, with my eight month old on the back of a bike seat and transitioned them into a trailer when I had two kids. And when they got 
too heavy for me to haul up a hill, I got a cargo electric bicycle. And as you can see, it easily fit four kids on the back, even though I just have two. Those are two of my roommates. Um, so I'm going to look at my screen here too. Yeah, so as an educator, when I think about biking with kids, I try to orient how old they are and where they are developmentally. And so as you can see with younger kids, and I'll take questions at the end in terms of what's the best way to get them around, what are the best devices, which I'm sure Doug will talk about. But for me, it's really the philosophy. Like when kids are in the back of my bicycle, my own kids, or if I'm leading a bike club, the two things that I really try to model from a very young age, first thing is always that biking is fun. You know, if a lot of parents, sometimes not a lot, let me take that back, parents that are trying to get into biking and then feel kind of the pressure that they want to put their kids on the bike before they feel comfortable. I wouldn't recommend that. I think it's really important that young kids are going to model what they see from their parents. So if their parents are anxious on a bicycle, they're going to feel anxious on a bicycle. If their parents are unsafe and not following the rules of the road, when the kids are on the back of the bicycle, that's what kids are gonna do, especially at a young age. They're just duplicating what they see. But most of all, that what they're gonna copy is that your joy. And I mean, I'm a self-declared lover of the bicycle. It's given me a lot of freedom um, and a lot of joy. And so my kids at five and seven, I mean, they just, they really, really love to be on the bicycle. And I think it's just because that's how they've seen me act. Um, a few tips in terms of how you do it is keep them with you. I mean, that should be pretty obvious, but I don't really let my five and seven year old, well, that's, that's not true. I let my five and seven year old get a far enough distance from me as I feel comfortable. So if my kids have been on their bikes now for three years, the five-year-old started biking when he was two, the seven-year-old started biking when he was two, I give them a lot of permission to get ahead of me, but I know that I still have voice control over them. But if your kids are new, when my kids were first starting to learn to bicycle, they were right next to me or right in front of me. And I gave them really, really clear instructions on where they needed to stop. Um, I think another thing that I highlighted on my um, presentation is see what they see. And if you can, that little clip art it's not just for design it's showing you and that's not even um good perspective necessarily but that a young child is smaller than a car and so when we were teaching pedestrian and bike safety in the bay area we would always walk around the neighborhood with kids in second grade and teach them that when they're if they have to cross between parked cars or if they're on their little scoop bike there's no way that cars can see them and so seeing what they see is that um, cars can't see them, they can't see the cars. And so I've always taught them to get out a little bit so that if they can see the car, the car can see them. The other thing that I'm, um, when you talk, when I talk about see what they see, from my research, young kids don't have a good perception of speed. And so you might think it's obvious, oh yeah, that car is on, you know, on the other block and you have way, you have enough time to cross. Young kids just developmentally have a hard time noticing how long it takes for a car to get them. So that get to them. So they'll either think it's safe because the car is far away, but it's not, or they'll think, wow, that car is coming to me quickly and it's two blocks away. So I think that when you're teaching kids to bike or walk safely, you really need to kind of scaffold that speed. You know, this is exactly when it's safe to cross and then test them. Um, and so what I start to do with kids, when they get to be six, like I'll go on the same route for a while, make sure that they know where all the crossings are, where the bike lanes are, what the intersections look like, and then I'll start to kind of test them. I'll say, okay, I'm gonna bike to the end of the street and I'm gonna watch you, or I'm gonna bike next to you, but I'm not gonna tell you what to do. And in that way, I know that 
eventually when they're old enough to bike, I've I've already watched them going through the whole process and it makes me feel more comfortable giving them a more sense, uh, a larger sense of freedom. Okay, I realize I'm talking too much. So let's go to the next slide and I'll speed through these two. Mary Catherine, can you go to the next slide? Oh, sorry, I see it. Okay, respect and rules of the road. Okay, so the first part, six and under, is that they're just replicating you, but between seven and 11, in the public schools in the Bay Area and also I know in Vermont in terms of the um, the trailers that Locomotion rents out and the Safe Routes to Schools program, that's when you're really doing education. You're teaching the kids the rules of the road. You're putting them on bike rodeos. My seven-year-old already knows the ABC Quick Check, which is just airs, air, you know, does your bike have air in it? Do your brakes work? Is your chain connected? They learn how to adjust their helmets. And they also continue to learn from watching adults model appropriate safety. So when they're younger, I wouldn't necessarily focus on quizzing them on their safety, but when they get to be seven and they can make more independent decisions, that's the time to really teach them what the skills are. Um, and I also included that little poster because when they, between seven and 11, you can start to insert kind of why biking is good. Um, and I always think of, sorry, I didn't, um, <laughs> the four R's, I think, the four E's is it's good for the environment. It's good for, oh, just the four reasons. It's good for the environment. It's good for your body, right? It's good for traffic, less traffic, less pollution, more fun more exercise. I really try to instill that in my children. So the four reasons to walk and bike. All right, Mary Catherine, next slide. I don't think, there it is. Okay. So when they're teenagers, you know, I would say it's, the earlier you can get kids excited about bikes, like anything, the better. Because once they're in their tweens and teens, they think they know everything and it might be hard to introduce them to something new. But teenagers really want to, developmentally, they really want to make a difference in the world and they certainly want to have their freedom. And so when I've worked with teens with biking, I've led a lot of leadership camps. And it's surprising that a lot of middle school students They've biked, but like on bike paths in Vermont, and not, not a lot of them have biked on large roads. And so just taking them on a long bike ride that is on the road where they have responsibility and there's a little bit of a challenge, I found really like taps into their need to feel empowered and taps in their into their need to feel trusted to make good decisions and taps into their need for um like making a difference in the world, especially when you can start to educate, like if you're a teacher in a school and you can do classes on climate change and how just the choice to bike is not only fun, but good for the environment, teens will start to make that decision because they wanna make good stories and they wanna make a difference. Um, and I put that picture of a BMX rider um, because Teens are gonna, you know, be able to access what they love about biking. Some kids are gonna love the bike touring aspect of it. Some kids are gonna love the recreational aspect of it. And some kids just wanna be able to have freedom and get around themselves. So I'm happy at the end to answer more specific questions about what safety skills to teach, but that's my overview on child development and teaching biking. That's it. I think that's Thank all the time so I much. have, too. Yeah. Yes, it's awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Now we are going to hear from Doug. So I'm going to turn his screen on, and he will be presenting. All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Awesome. Hope everyone's enjoying another beautiful day here in Vermont. 
Let's see what I got. Let's go. Um, okay. Thanks, Melanie. We'll get into um, now the gear side that you kind of alluded to for me nicely, which was awesome. Um, so gear with kids. Uh, my name is Doug Stewart. Um, one of the managers at the ski rack. Spend half my year doing the alpine ski thing and half my year doing the bike thing. Makes for a good year. Um, so in talking about gear with kids, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Uh, let's start about the little ones. Um, you know, helmet is an essential piece of equipment. I don't think a kid in America does anything without a helmet now, so they kind of understand that. You know, culturally, it's the thing. Uh, somewhere around one year is kind of when we talk about kids doing bike speed kind of things, uh, whether that's in a trailer being pulled behind a bike or a bike seat or, you know, something that goes bike speed. Uh, they need to be able to sit up, they need to be able to support their head, and they need to be able to wear a helmet. Um, so around one year is kind of when that happens. Obviously, every kid's different, so it can be uh, specific to the child. Um, measure up the head, get a right, a good measurement of that, uh, usually in centimeters, um, and then find a helmet that's within that range, get it tight, you know, have the chin strap snug enough that, you know, they can open their mouth, but, um, the helmet doesn't fall off. Um, and then as far as getting the mountain going, you know, uh, you can get them uh, on your bike, just add a bike seat to your bike. Uh, you can get a cargo bike, uh, like we just saw, which is awesome. Uh, a big cargo bike with like a safety rail around the edge is great for the little ones, but you know, um, as they get bigger enough to kind of hold themselves up and you can install uh, a bike seat, a more secure bike seat onto that cargo bike for the little, little ones as well, or the stick them in a trailer, which is also a great option. So if we're going to put them onto your bike, you have an existing bike, regular, you know, one person, uh, two wheel bike, um, you can add a kid seat to that. Um, roughly hundred bucks, you know, can get expensive from there to 250. Um, it's a good way to have the child with you. You know, that one year old, 18 month old with you close to you, uh, the conversations, communications can be a little bit better, uh, a little more involved. Um, this will kind of change the way your bike handles, you know, um, one of the things I think is important is uh, there's an assumption being made, we're all big bikers. So we're going to bring our family and our kids into our biking. There are times when you may be discovering biking as the adult kind of right. with the kids. So if you aren't as comfortable, you know, it's important that we gain some comfort ourselves as the adult. And this is probably the category where that matters the most. If you're going to put, you know, a bunch of pounds on the bike and kind of change the way the bike handles, you want to get pretty good at riding the bike. So spending time getting used to that. I've had um, customers throw big weights or stuff into a seat, just ride around for a couple of reasons. They might want to test the seat. Maybe they're not confident in it um, to make sure it's not going to fall off the bike. Um, or they just want to uh, test their handling skills. So get good at the bike, uh, be able to hold it in place while you're loading the kid. There is a technique there to getting the kid onto the bike and making sure you're always holding the bike while they're on it. Um, you can do a seat uh, in the back. We'll take a little bit bigger kid, uh, take a little bit more weight on a rear rack. Could very well be a, a bike rack when the seat's not there. Uh, or you can put a kid up front. There are bike seats that will go on the front, and the kid basically straddles uh, the stem of the bike or the, the head tube of the bike, and your arms are basically going around them to hold the handlebars, and you're almost giving them a hug. So you're really close with them, but that definitely is a smaller kid. They'll outgrow that seat a little bit sooner, but some people do enjoy that. In the U.S., um, it wasn't as popular as the back seats, but it's starting to gain more popularity as we realize these are other good options. So that's your seat on your bike. Uh, cargo bike, like we just saw there on the, on the left side. Um, that, uh, that's a great option. That particular one doesn't have the kid corral kind of around it, but you can add that type of stuff, add a seat to it, whatever, um, which is great. You know, as the kids get bigger, uh, they, they still love riding it. I've, I put my kids as a pretty big age on the back of a cargo bike, especially an electric cargo bike when you can get cooking uh, and they have a good time. Um, you know, and then there's also uh, kind of the bucket bikes, which is a little more of a European style, which has definitely become more popular in the U.S. Uh, little, little kids up there, groceries up there, your dog's up there, like 
just put your life in a bucket and go biking. Um, so lots of options there just to have them on the bike with you. Uh, and like I said, age wise, little, little, you know, 12 month old in a bike seat attached to one of these things or in one of these things all the way up to, you know, six, seven, eight, nine year old, 10 year old on the back of a cargo bike, just getting around. Um, next option, uh, if we don't put the kids on the bike or if you have maybe two kids and, and just don't want to do double kids on a bike, um, you could do a trailer. Trailers are great, uh, can be very inexpensive, can be very expensive. Uh, some of the trailers will convert into a lot of other things, uh, jogging strollers and just a regular stroller, um, skiing, cross-country skiing. Uh, they'll do a lot of stuff. Um, you can uh, pad in around the kids. They'll have stabilizers for the little, little kids. Some people do get confused because a lot of these trailers will come with like infant slings. And they think, yeah. well, wow, this thing has a sling to put my six-month-old in it. Like, I'm going to go bike with them. And that's not what they're for. A lot of these trailers are also strollers. So if you're going to jogging, stroll, or just regular stroll around the town, um, that could make sense to put a six-month-old in there and have an infant sling or, or a three-month-old or someone really little uh, in an infant sling. But that's not designed for biking. Again, it's around 12 months when they're sitting up in the – in the in the trailer maybe with supports around the sides a little bit if they're small um but that that's really when you want to start going biking speed and a trailer is great because it is like a little roll cage i mean heaven forbid something happens you crash the bike things tip over the bike can usually fully tip over without necessarily tipping over the trailer uh, and vice versa the trailer could tip over without your bike tipping over so there is enough independence there uh but the kid is in a in a roll cage so it's a pretty safe way to go uh, for sure uh safety flags important because again like we were just talking about you've got things down low people don't see that um so it's important to kind of identify that there is a trailer there uh just won't change the handling your bike as much uh it's a little bit of work going up a hill for sure especially if you have two kids or two kids plus a diaper bag and a bunch of stuff in the back um, but it is a, a nice, safe, easy way to load up with kids. Kids love riding in them. Uh, one of the downsides will be that, you know, the conversations are trickier. You're not going to be really conversing as well with the kids. They're kind of in their own little zone. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they're going to start coming Wi-Fi enabled with the way kids are on tech as much as they are now. So there's a bike trail. Good option. Um, as they get a little bit older, there's some other options we can do um, as we're transitioning to them truly riding their own bikes and becoming bikers themselves. Um, the WeHoo is a, a product I love to talk about because it's very unique, uh, and that's one good way to get them to start to feel like they're on a bike. Uh, and then there's a regular tag along or trail a bike style bike, which is a lot like a regular bike. Uh, that's attached to the adult bike and again starts to give them the feel for biking for real some of these kids you know as early as two years they're riding a bike themselves on a kick bike or a push bike of some kind um, or even a pedal bike at two or three years but a lot of times that's not a bike you can really go biking with them on uh, if a kid's on a 10 wheel 10 inch wheel or 12 inch wheel biking just starting to bike you really could go walking or jogging with that kid uh, and enjoy their time with them. If you're on a bike, they're not really going the same speed. So those kids who are just starting to ride might benefit from being on a Wii Hoo or a tag along. So they're still biking, but they're going the speed you're going until they get onto a 16 inch or 20 inch or 24 inch bike. So the WeHoo, just to show you guys what that looks like, it's a recumbent style tag along bike, uh, has a, a, a multi, point harness on there so the kid is really secure you could put a two-year-old in this thing um, their feet are strapped to the pedals uh, they can help I mean a two-year-old is not going to help you but the pedals being strapped to their feet will keep their feet safe uh, the seat slides up and back so you can start really little on this and kind of treat it like a trailer but more of an open wheel trailer where they're getting the tipping and turning and feeling like they're really doing biking uh, they do make a tandem for two kids uh, they do make one with more cargo space, so that's kind of the benefit of like a trailer type design, being able to carry some stuff with you. Uh, but this is a really fun way to go riding, and I've had a lot of customers, clients who who do click, put this onto a road bike and go for like a 50 or 100 mile road bike ride with their kid. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, it's a fun option for someone who's pretty into biking. And I have seen some people get pretty rowdy with a mountain bike in a WeHoo. Uh, you know, that's up to that's up to the parents. Um, traditional tag along, uh, something like an Adams trailer bike. Uh, not quite as expensive as a WeHoo. And again, this is a kid who needs to know how to stay on the bike. So four or five years old, um, they can fall off this, right? So uh, they need to be capable on the bike, even though they're attached to you. It's not going to tip over unless you tip over. Um, 
it, uh, it, they do need to stay on there and not fall asleep, for example. So another good option. And some of these can be converted into a bike. Uh, Burley made one, uh, makes one where you can actually add a wheel to the front and turn it into a bike when, when uh, not like a back and forth kind of get somewhere and convert it, but just when you're done using it as a trailer bike, turn it into a, a 20 wheel, 20 inch wheel bike for your kid. Um, so then uh, once they've kind of gotten through there, here's your progression for um, what bikes kids would ride. You know, they're on a push bike, walking around, scooting around. They get some pedals, you know, in 12 inch, uh, three to five year old, coaster brakes. So you're braking with the pedals. Um, they're not using their hands and their feet. That just gets too complicated. Just hands are just holding on, feet are doing all the work. Uh, 16 inch bike, 20 inch bike, 24 inch bike. And it's really, as that bike gets bigger, you can add gears, you'll add features. You know, a 20-inch bike is pretty legitimate. A 24-inch bike really is an adult bike. You'll have all your options. You can start to be more mountain bike, road bike, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of a quick progression of ages and, and how you'll get through the bikes as the kids are riding. And like I said before, 20-inch bike is a pretty good bike for going to real speed, especially if you have gears. Uh, that's where you really can ride with a kid and not feel like you're holding back a ton. Uh, riding an adult bike with a kid on a 16-inch bike with no gears depends on the kid. I've seen some kids who can hammer uh, and they can do some distance on that, but they're working real hard with a 16-inch wheel and the little tiny cranks and potentially no gears to choose from. Um, so that's kind of the spiel there. We can take, uh, take some questions at the end here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, does anybody have any questions for us? If you do, just um, type something in the question box. Um, and I'll wait just a moment to see if we see anything from anybody. All right, I think um, we, I don't see any questions right now. And we will um, just really quickly go over a um, couple of things that locomotion can offer families in just a second. Um, just look out of this. And let's. Uh, so Locomotion has a, a page with resources on how to bike with kids. If you go to our, our website, uh, locomotion.org, and you go to Education for Kids, you'll see resources, our Parents Guide to Safe Bicycling, uh, information on how to teach a child how to ride a bike using a balanced bike, our Bike Smart curriculum, which is full of uh, bike skill building games, as well as a, a lot of everyday, a lot of biking games, just fun little little games that uh, families can do to make biking just a little bit more fun. So you can find that right here, locomotion.org, our education resources. We have a whole lot of great things, families can use to improve their kids' bike handling skills and other, other skills. Let's see, we have one question from Bevin. Some suggestions for biking in the winter, and I'll bet um, either Melanie or Doug have some really good suggestions on that. All right, so Melanie and Doug, you guys are self-muted. If either one of you have any um, thing to say, I can start talking. Oh, there we go. Here's Melanie. Good. Oops. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, when the kids were in trailers, it wasn't a problem. I mean, I bike all year, and um, they were so cozy. So when they were, you know, one or a little less than one and two, I would just wrap them up in my down sleeping bag and pat them up and I wouldn't even um, put the covers down. I would leave it open and the kids really enjoyed the fresh air. I mean, it's the same as taking them for a walk in the stroller. I had that experience. I, I, oh, the last few winters I've biked them on my electric cargo bike. That's a little more challenging. What I did, which didn't necessarily look attractive, but functioned was that you know, I just made sure that they were dressed up as if they were going skiing, like downhill skiing. And then I wrapped, I had an old sleeping bag 
and I <laughs> I bungeed it around them, um, like kind of like a blanket um, around them, and that seemed to keep them warm. The one problem I had, which I think adults have too, whether you're skiing or biking or anything, is that their feet got kind of cold. So occasionally when we would go for a long ride, I would wrap their feet up in um, some blankets. Now, I'm not really much of a gear person, so that's what I did in terms of what I had around the house to keep them comfortable, but I'm sure that there's gear that you can buy to pad your children's feet to keep them comfortable. And, you know, I'm still under the philosophy is if it doesn't kill them, it makes them stronger. They still love biking, even though I decided that nine degrees was a little too cold for them, but it seemed like 20 degrees and above was just fine for them. <laughs> That's my opinion. Oh, yeah, and just I one more thing is a really big thing is, um, uh, hello, sorry. I just made sure they wore face masks. That also was a really important part to keep them comfortable. Their cheeks would get really cold. And so I bought them face masks that I could Velcro around the backside of their helmets. Perfect, yeah, I, I think uh, your reference to skiing makes a ton of sense, you know. Um, so any, any kid who's going to go out in that temperature, it's the same deal. Use your ski helmet. You know, ski helmets are great bike helmets for dead of winter as well as fall and spring when it's still pretty chilly. Uh, being in the trailer, you're right, is uh, is much easier. I remember doing a ride with my boys when my older boy was on a bike, and we were it was October. It was really cold, and and he got really cold, and we I stuck him in the trailer with his younger brother. Uh, made quite the workout for myself because he was a pretty heavy kid by that time. Um, but you know, the trailer is definitely the easiest way to go. Uh, just know that winter biking, you know, is going to take a toll on the, all the equipment. So all the bikes are, you know, if you're talking about salty roads and stuff, like all the bikes, oh. all the parts, if you're biking a lot, biking year-round, there, there's more maintenance required. There's more cleaning required. You're going to burn through burn through parts of the bike faster. Uh, but super fun. Get out and do it. You know, you can get studded tires. You can do whatever you got to do. And once the kid's on that bigger bike, you know, your 20-inch, your 24-inch bikes, you can do any kind of bike. So you could be on a fat bike. You could be on whatever. Uh, for the smaller bikes, those are even starting to do a lot more wide, big, fat tires. So even some of the push bikes and kick bikes are starting to have bigger tires on them. Um, so all that stuff makes snow and sand and grass and just that much easier. Um, so, yeah, just be warm, you know, whether it's uh, two little disposable tow heaters or hand heaters. Um, we've done a hot tronics, which is like a battery powered heater for for people's bike shoes for adults. Um, you know, you've got covers and stuff you can buy. So all that stuff you can do, and it gets, some of that stuff gets pretty small. So once the kids get a little bigger, they've, they've got access to all that same equipment. Absolutely. As uh, thank yeah, you both. I'd like as, to say one more thing. If mm -hmm. oh. yes, Melanie, M MC. Um, yeah. I just want to agree with Doug that the biggest challenge was that my chain. You know, a lot of the equipment really gets wrecked in the winter, and so. <clears throat> keeping up on it that was my biggest restriction in biking um and i didn't find i started my tires the first year because i was a little worried about slipping with the kids on my bike and then i just decided that they didn't see that they it didn't seem that they made a huge difference and so once the roads are plowed um i felt pretty comfortable biking without studs and i just didn't go out if the roads weren't clear because it felt unsafe biking um, without a good shoulder with the kids on my bike. So really um, being in Vermont, it really depended on when the plowing happened and how well the roads were salted, especially living, I'm not in Burlington, I'm in a more rural area, so. Absolutely, thank you. Um, as one person once said to me, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Yeah, so um, you can get through most of it with the right kind of gear, although you need to keep an eye out for extremities. And um, Another real important point to think about for biking in the winter is um, definitely don't do it for the first time with your kids. Most of you already know that. But um, I, for example, um, actually still have trouble handling my bike in the winter. The bike handles differently. Things are a little sloppier. Things, you know, you might hit some ice i did that once <laughs> so um just uh, get some practice by yourself riding your bike in the winter before you add the extra 
stress component of having your kid on your bike, just so you feel more comfortable doing it and that you have the skills you need to handle the slightly changed terrain that is the road during that part. But if the roads are plowed and dried, it shouldn't be a problem, but there's always like those sneaky little spots. So practice first. All right, I don't see any other questions for folks um, on this. So I'm gonna thank everybody for attending. This was really interesting. Thank you, Doug and Melanie. There was a lot of really good information from both of you. And if anybody has any questions to ask um, that they think of later, you can always email me at education at locomotion.org. And I will, um, if I don't know the answer myself, I obviously know a lot of people who do know the answers to good questions. And I will uh, ask around until I find the, the answer we need. So thank you to everybody. And we are done. Thank you. Have a good day. Enjoy this crazy weather. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was great. Thank you. Bye.